we are going to use Key Digital Management Software Pro to build a 4K AV over IP system using our KD IP822 encoders and decoders, our KD IP922 encoders and decoders, remember 822s and 922s can mix and match within the same system, or our KD IP1022 encoders and decoders. In this example system, it's three encoders by three decoders. They're called Laptop A, B, and DirecTV, which will get IR control, and the decoders are called Room A left and right, and room B, which again will also get IR control using our display control feature. So plan ahead and get your IP addresses mapped out. We're going to start at 192.168.1.5 going through 1.16. And remember, every encoder, every decoder of our 4K over AB over IP products gets two IP addresses each. So plan ahead, use our configuration questionnaire. It's available on the web page for any of these products. And step number one is always, always, always set up that network switch first. We also have an instruction guide on how to set those up on our website. So step one, always set up the network switch. Step two then is connect into each unit and configure. This is done over USB. So you'll connect the included USB cable into uh, unit one, our encoder number one here, and we're going to uh, perform a USB device scan. It's gonna ask us, is this a master controller? The answer is yes. We go ahead and begin that scan, and we're gonna apply four very important settings. Number one is the device name, laptop A. Number two is the system ID. We start at one and we work our way up. Number three is the main IP address, so we're gonna enter in that 1.5. And number uh, four is the video IP address, so that's that 1.6 as we had mapped. We press the save disk icon, and now the unit will reboot. You see it does take about one minute in total, but we're gonna go ahead and speed that up for pur purposes of this video. So now we could go ahead and press this refresh icon and we can confirm that all of the settings have retained the name, the ID, the main IP address, the video IP address, and fret not if you see here in the video network settings that video MAC address, sometimes it will show as 0000, 000, 000 until that uh, collects a little bit slower than the other information. So now we go ahead and we're going to connect our next encoder providing the name as desired, laptop B, the ID, the IP address. So we did 1.5 and six, so now we'll do seven and eight. And you see all those settings, once they change, they're in the green and red. We press the floppy disk icon to save those settings. Hit fast forward on the reboot uh, clock here. And after that unit reboots, we can go ahead and once again, refresh to collect those settings of the unit and confirm that everything has retained. So again, we're just doing this one by one here using the USB connection. It's the USB A to micro cable that we include. It's plugged into the micro USB, the service port on the uh, encoder decoder unit itself. We're gonna go ahead and connect unit number three now and perform our USB scan. And again, remember, it asks us if this is a master controller, the answer is yes. And you see the products listed uh, that do qualify as master controllers, which your encoders and decoders, those model numbers are included in that list. So here's our DirecTV, which is our encoder number three. Again, we start at one, we work our way up. So one, two, three. Now the IP address, the main IP address, and the video IP address, these must be unique. They cannot be the same. Uh, each unit kind of acts as two computers, if you will, on your network, two unique IP devices. The main handles all the communication, the video, of course, encodes and decodes the video over IP broadcast. We can now connect our first decoder, perform a USB device scan, and remember the uh, names of our decoders. This is a video wall that is two by one. So here's the room A left side. And for the decoders, we start at one also. So starting at one, working our way up, 
entering that unique IP address per our IP address configuration uh, table. Main IP, video IP, floppy disk to save. So really it's, it's just those four settings. And unless you are changing the, uh, the, the, your subnets, 192.168.1 to something else, then you would have to update your gateway as well. So that would be a total of six setting changes. But here we're just doing four and we're getting into the flow here now. So now we've connected decoder two and this will be a right side monitor. ID number two, the main IP address, and the video IP address, and now we can save. And hit fast forward on that reboot time. But that will take that whole, you see about 48 plus 10 seconds. So it's about a whole minute. These units do take about one minute to reboot. So keep that in mind if you were to disconnect them from their PoE power or power supply. Connect the sixth and final unit, which is our decoder three, which is the room B or display B, ID number three, entering the IP address. for the main IP and the video IP. Everything looks good. We can now save. Let the unit reboot. And we can refresh to make sure all those settings look good. You see that green and red becomes white and black, meaning the settings are solid and uh, have retained. Very good. So for the next step, we're going to build the AV over IP system. So you're going to connect all of the units into your network switch. Now that the network switch is configured and each unit is configured, we're not going to have any network conflicts. And once every unit is connected, we could go ahead and perform a network scan. Make sure that your IP address of your laptop is set to be within that domain uh, or that subnet. And this scan generally takes about 60 seconds, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go ahead and hit fast forward here as well. And we see all six units have shown up and we could go ahead now and build our AV over IP system, choosing the AV over IP system tab, and then pressing the build from scan button. We give a name, and you could see that it has detected the amount of encoders and decoders, because that's pulled in from the scan. We can save this file and load, and this is just a three by three matrix right now. So for examples, per, uh, for the example of those systems where you just have a three by three matrix, you don't have any video wall, this is all you would do, is just uh, build this switch file from the scan and load it throughout to every encoder, every decoder. And now you need to perform a new network scan because when KDMS scans, it collects all that system data from each unit. One of the next options is to enable source and display control. So we do have a abbreviated control panel for sources like cable boxes and satellite boxes or streamers like Apple TV and Roku, as you see from this drop-down list. So you just choose it from the drop-down. And uh, so DirecTV for encoder three, and all three of these decoders are gonna be connected to a Samsung display. So we choose it from the drop-down list of the display control. And it, you know, if it's an encoder, it says source control. If it's a decoder, it says display control. Once again, now that those new settings have applied, we perform a new network scan and we could see these settings uh, that they have retained by selecting the device. Uh, we have to choose the decoder first and then an encoder that'll route your video and you could see the control dock for the display. And of course, laptop A and B, those are not controllable. 
so there's no source control applied. Now we're going to add the video wall to the system. Now remember that room A had a 2x1 video wall, the left and right side. And for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna open our existing switch file. And all of these switch files are located within KDMS folder. So gotta keep all those folders in there. Don't pull anything out of that folder. We're gonna open our existing switch system. And you see they're red? We just hit this link button to link to the live encoders and decoders on our network. Now we press this add video wall button. We name the video wall and you see that starting display? That's your decoder ID number where the video wall starts which in our case is number one, but that's important if it didn't start on decoder one, you gotta make sure you enter the correct ID number there. We could save and we see that it is added the video wall down there uh, in the tree. Now we just reload this uh, switch file throughout, letting every, so it's actually loading to every unit in the system, letting it know that there is a video wall in the system. So it's not just going to the two decoders that have the, video wall loaded, very important to note. So now we've added the video wall, and once again, we will perform a new scan so that when KDMS collects the data from the system, there's going to, it's gonna know that there is a video wall. And we could see there, the displays, that the, uh, those two displays are now considered one. And when we press this video wall button at the bottom center, we could choose a source and just drag our finger diagonally or from left to right, and now we have one large image across the screen.